In case you missed it, Power BI just released some awesome new features in the May 2025 update. But my favorite one so far is the new and improved list slicer. You know the drill, let's fire up Power BI desktop and see it in action. All right, so back in November 2023, Power BI introduced button slicers like the one you see here, which were pretty sweet. They gave us the ability to add images, to customize formatting for different button states like hover and click, and really just make slicers that look way better and more modern than these old original versions. The only catch is that these button slicers can only include a single field, which is definitely a little bit limiting. Now fast forward about a year to October 2024, when Power BI introduced a new type of slicer called the List Slicer, which you'll see here. These are great for embedding multiple nested fields within one single slicer, but unfortunately they didn't come with those great new formatting and styling options that we got with our button slicers until now. So in May 2025, these List Slicers got a major facelift. Now we have the ability to do things like restrict certain types of selections, add images and labels for additional context, apply precise formatting to customize virtually any slicer state, and even paste values directly into the slicer from a tab separated list. Now for this demo, we're going to kind of continue where we left off with our button slicer here. The only difference if we head to our table view is that instead of just looking at the instructor name, title, and image URL, now we have a new table called Instructor Team Details, which introduces one new column called Team. And this gives us a hierarchy that we can use for our new list slicer. So let's jump back to our report view here and start adding some fields to our list slicer. I'm going to click Add Data, drill into our Instructor Team Details, and let's select the Team and the Instructor Name. Note that you can also customize tooltips here with these list slicers as well. I'm not going to do that right now, but just know that that is an option for you. And right now I don't see anything selected. That's because I've got some visual interactions at play, and I don't really want any of these slicers to interact with each other at all. So let's go ahead and turn off interactions from the new list slicer and vice versa. And when I do that, there we go. Now we should see all five of those teams unfiltered got Data Science, Excel, Power BI, SQL, and Tableau. And check this out. If we drill into any of those teams, we can view the individual instructors that fall under that team. And this type of nested field behavior is really where list slicers shine. And what's cool is that you can now select a parent category to auto-select all of the children, or you can select at any level of detail or granularity inside of that hierarchy. And just like any slicer or visual, we've got a ton of formatting options here that we can play with. I'm going to show you a few of these. Feel free to follow along or do some formatting as you see fit. But in this case, I'm going to kind of go top to bottom, starting with our title, which we really don't need. So I'm going to disable that. Under slicer settings, these should look pretty familiar. You've got single select. You can force a selection, show a select all option. This is kind of the new one here, restrict to leaf nodes. This is useful if you only want users to be able to filter at the lowest level of granularity, in this case, at the instructor level. I don't really care, so I can leave that setting off. And if we go on to shape, again, this is where if you're gonna use things like background fill, you can customize the look and feel. Let's go with a rounded rectangle, kind of similar to what we did before with 15 pixels. That looks good. Under layout, this is where you can change you know, how much information is shown, spacing between buttons, indentation, things like that, if you want to kind of compress or expand the values here in the slicer. So let's bump this up to you know, 10 buttons shown. That looks good. And now where I really want to focus is in the callout value section. This is where you have a ton of formatting options. Just like other slicers, you can apply formats to individual series or all of the series within the visual. You can also apply formats to different states like rest, hover, press, and selected. But where it gets crazy, and this is new in May, is that now with these advanced features, you can access basically any combination of states that this list slicer can take based on what values are selected, whether a field is expanded or collapsed, what the interaction state looks like. This gives you so much precision and customization for formatting these list slicers. I'm not really going to get too in-depth there. It's pretty intuitive. Really just recommend that you play with it, kind of customize the look and feel of these slicers. 
But let's say we want to do something relatively straightforward. You know, and when the user hovers over the team names, I want to make them bold. I could do that pretty easily by selecting the team series. You can go into the hover state and just choose the bold formatting option, which looks pretty good. And now if I want it to persist and remain bold, once that field has been selected, I could go ahead and select the selected state and choose bold again. Now, similar logic, if we want to bold an individual instructor that's been selected, we can follow pretty similar pattern here, select instructor name, state is selected, font is bold. So that looks pretty good to me. Again, we could go much, much deeper here, but I think for our purposes, this gets the job done. Hey everyone, Matt here from Maven. Just wanna let you know that right now you can get 25% off our upcoming Data Literacy and Power BI immersive programs. These are 10 week cohort style programs designed to teach you job ready skills, 10 weeks of live sessions, a private community, a capstone portfolio project, and a year of access to the Maven platform. The best skill specific cohorts out there. Come join us, link in the description below. All right, so let's collapse values. Next up, we've got labels. These are new. Labels are basically like subtext, just like the subtext that you see here in our button slicers that can be really helpful for providing additional context to your report viewers or your end users. You can customize these labels for any combination of series and state. So let's go ahead and start with team. And one thing that might be helpful here, I'm gonna select all states, would be to show a count of instructors that fall under each team so that if all of our categories are collapsed, at a glance you can see, okay, there are three data science instructors, there are two Excel instructors. That's very easy to do with these label options. So I've got the team series selected, I'm gonna activate labels, and I'm gonna drop in a field here. And all I need to do is select the instructor name. I'm gonna change the summarization mode to a distinct count and check it out. Now it's very easy to see that there are three instructors in this category. There are two in the Excel category, two for Power BI, one for SQL, and one for Tableau. And just like our button slicer, I can do something similar at the instructor level. Maybe we activate labels there as well, and we pull in the instructor title. Now when we drill in, oh, interesting. We only see Josh, not Chris or Alice, and that's because we had applied that to the selected state. So we want this to apply to all states. Turn on the label, bring in that title, and there we go. Now we see all of the other ones populate as well. Now the last new feature here is the image feature. So let's scroll all the way down to images. And remember, we've got these instructor URLs, these headshots for each instructor. So I'm gonna add images to the instructor name series. Let's start by adding them to all states here. And let's go ahead and grab that image URL field. And we're gonna to need to do a little bit of formatting. Let's change the image fit to normal. Let's change the area size down to 20%, make them a bit smaller. And I want a little bit more spacing between the headshot and the name. So I'll bump this up to like 10 pixels. And that looks pretty good. And I really liked what we did with our button slicer where these headshots were kind of desaturated by default. And that's a very easy update to make here in our list slicer as well. We can now change our state to the default kind of rest state drop the saturation all the way down. And now we're gonna see that saturated headshot on selection and hover. Last thing to show you here, all the way at the bottom, you can actually turn off these selection icons, these kind of radio buttons, which in this case are a little bit redundant. That kind of cleans things up a little bit. You can also customize the look and feel of the actual expand and collapse icons, these little carrots here on the left. And of course, you can do any sort of formatting that you want with the buttons, just like we did in our button slicer demo. So there you have it. That's my crash course in the Power BI list slicer and the new functionality introduced in May 2025. For more content just like this, make sure to like and subscribe and check out the description below for links to some of my favorite Power BI resources. I'll see you in the next one.